set a timer for five minutes. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. This is actually one of the coffees and one of the things that came in like Google's gift box that they sent all of us reviewers from a bit ago. I hadn't tried the coffee yet because I was like, there's coffee in a bag, that seems weird to me. And I have to admit, it's not too bad. So, coffee, check. But, in this video, we're gonna be doing a real world test on the Pixel 5, which I'm actually pretty excited about. But, if you're not familiar, real world test on this channel is where I'm gonna kinda go through my normal day. My SIM card is in here. I actually put a T-Mobile SIM card in this so that I could use 5G here in New York City. Um, so we'll be testing that out as well. But I'll check in on the battery throughout the day and just kinda see how it does, as well as take photos on it and a bunch of other phones that I have that I'm going to be bringing with me um, and put those up on the screen so you guys can compare for yourselves. Now for today, in this video, we're gonna head to an old neighborhood of mine. And a quick 15 minute train ride and we're back in my old hood. Welcome to the West Village. You want a small or large? Uh, large, please. Okay, this is one of our first stops. It's a coffee shop called Elk. Now, first off, because more coffee, duh. But I actually used to remember when this coffee shop opened when I lived here. It used to be called Mojo. And then an ambitious young woman named Claire actually bought the space, completely gutted and renovated it, and the elk came into being. Now, it has since been one of my favorite coffee shops here in the West Village. And actually, I was kind of worried that it wasn't here on the way over, but it's here and it's cute as ever. Okay, now, normally in that place is totally packed so you can't sit there. So the move is to get your coffee and your egg sandwich or whatever else you get there, and then come across the West Side Highway and sit at the Hudson River Park, which is kind of this like expansive green space along the Hudson River on the Manhattan side. And it has like a bunch of different piers that have all been converted into essentially like parks and playgrounds and a bunch of other stuff. It's kind of neat. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of miss coming out here and sitting with my laptop and working back in the day. But while we're sitting still, uh, let's talk about something you guys asked about. <laughs> what is the difference between the 4A 5G camera and the Pixel 5? Now the short answer is nothing. <laughs> they have the exact same sensor, the same wide angle sensor even. They also have the exact same processor. So all of the things that usually change between Pixels, and most of that comes down to processing power with the computational additions, isn't here. So these phones actually take the exact same photo. Now someone did ask if the RAM makes a difference in the processing time. And again, the answer is no. Now there is an extra two gigs of RAM in the Pixel 5 than there is in the Pixel 4a, but the RAM's not really being used when you're processing a photo. So of course it doesn't make a difference. And while we're here, let's check in on the battery. I took it off the charger, maybe about like 9.30 or so. I was sitting in bed, like keeping it charged and still chatting on it like a dummy. Um, but it is now 2 p.m., 2.05 p.m. to be exact. And we are at 86%.
Which brings us to my old apartment. It's that, back there on the second floor, right above the Philip Marie restaurant. I lived there for four years before I moved to my current apartment across the river in Brooklyn. And honestly, this apartment and the West Village are one of the favorite places that I've ever lived in this city in the 12 years that I've been here. So much so that I, there was once an artist sketching it here on the corner, my apartment and the building next to it, and I immediately bought it, and it's actually in my current apartment to this day. Oh, nostalgia. Am I right? And then right across the street from my old apartment is this pretty famous bar. It's the second longest continuously running bar in New York City. It's called the White Horse Tavern. Now the bar originally opened in 1880 and it was made to kind of serve all of the men that were working on the piers, which have now become the Hudson River Park that I just showed you. But then by the 1950s, a lot of famous writers started showing up here and some of them being Dylan Thomas, even Bob Dylan and Jack Kerouac, who was kicked out of here many times, apparently. It's also, fun fact, Jack Kerouac stayed at that time in a building on the northwest corner of 11th and Hudson, which is basically my old apartment, or at least the building. Okay, now let's head out of here, uh, but let's check in the battery first. It is 5.13 p.m., and we are at 58%. Okay, let's test out some of the new panning options and stabilization, right? So whenever you click on video, you then have this little icon here in the corner. When you tap on that, stabilization standard is always set on. Locked is used for two times and five times zoom, and it kind of locks it as if it's on a tripod. So it's just like more aggressive. Then we have active, which is meant for if you're also moving. And finally, we have cinematic pan, which actually kind of slows the shot down in order to get these kind of cinematic pan shots that, well, you've seen me do a lot and a lot of other people do. the worst place to watch a sunset from, right? And this is one of my favorite Italian restaurants in New York City. Now, I love like fancy Italian places and like all sorts of different types. This place I love because it's it's so unpretentious. It's like it's like straight out of Italy. Everybody that works here is pretty much from Italy themselves, and the food is just super simple um, and yet just like really good. The one thing I always get though that I've been thinking about for a while and have not been here and I have to get is the spinach gnocchi with a gorgonzola cream sauce. And as I'm doing in all these videos lately, because you, someone recommended I do it in a past video, and I think it's a smart idea, I'm gonna leave a link to all of the places that I visit I in the video so you guys can check them out if you're curious. Okay, let's check in on the battery like we do before we get out of here. It is 7.51 p.m. and we are at 33%. Stopped at another place.
place for a nightcap on the way back to the train. But real quick, let's talk about some of the styling things about this phone. So the phone itself is made out of metal, apparently. But two things. One, there's actually a gap in that metal that is probably covered in plastic and a quote-unquote bioresin, as Google calls it, to allow for the Qi charging pad to work through it because Qi charging doesn't work through metal. Now, the other thing is, if you didn't tell me this was metal, I'm not sure I would know. I mean, to me, it kind of looks and feels very much like the 4A5G. Now, personally, regardless, I actually like the look and feel of it. I actually think that it's very minimalistic, very Google-esque, and, and it feels good in the hand. We also have the beloved fingerprint sensor on the back, and I frankly like it. It's quick, it's in a good spot, it's easy to use. But also, there's a feature that you can enable in this phone that allows you to swipe your finger along that fingerprint sensor down to get your notifications to come down and swipe up to get them to go back away. And I kind of like it to just peek at my notifications while I'm using it with one hand instead of having to reach the very top of the phone to try to get that to come down. All right, on the way back to the train, let's talk really fast about 5G on this phone. Now, the Pixel 5 actually has sub-6 and millimeter wave 5G, and I'll link to my video on what 5G is if you want to learn more about the differences between the two. But, needless to say, I'm using it on T-Mobile, so I'm only getting sub-6, which is the not as fast as millimeter wave, but has a lot more coverage version of 5G. And I've been kind of just doing random speed tests throughout the day, so I'll put that on the screen here for you guys to check that out. Now, it is the same chipset, the same 5G, at least because I'm using sub-6 and T-Mobile, that the Pixel 4a 5G uses. So, also on that network, when I was bouncing around with that the other day, here's how that did to even idea of different neighborhoods and how the speeds might vary. Now, obviously, that does mean, though, that if you want to use Verizon with this phone here in the United States, then you would have to use the Pixel 5 or pay a $100 premium to get the 4A 5G with millimeter wave built in called the 4A 5G UW for ultra wideband. It's what they've called their network, whatever. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, home, calling it night. It is 10.28 p.m. and we are at 15%. Here is my screen on time and my usage for anyone that's curious. And keep in mind that I, I use the camera a lot today. I even did a time lapse for about 20 minutes the camera was on and that obviously is gonna kill the battery. You can even see kind of you know, in the middle of that chart there where that happened and it started draining it pretty fast. But here's also my screen on time and my usage for another day that was obviously more typical than today, just so you have an idea. I said this about the 4A 5G and I think it still stands here. This is a good battery. I feel weird saying that about a Pixel, but it, yeah, it did a good job. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, let me know what you guys think of this video in general. Would love to hear from you guys. Um, would you guys actually watch me do like a like a vlog? Would you be interested in a vlog, period? Like just straight up vlog? Kind of curious. Let me know in the comments. Always appreciate it. Otherwise, if you like this video, though, please simply like better share it. It's greatly appreciated. I'll check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching. Light, fruity, hints of nut.